3,000 people in two minutes. This is the total number of people crossing at Tokyo's Shibuya Scramble Crossing with each green ride. The area around this crossing is filled with conspicuous outdoor advertisements and numerous large screens continuously stream music and advertising videos. It's a place that reminds you of a scene from Fred London, truly emblematic of modern Tokyo. But what history lies behind Shibuya's charm and vibrant atmosphere? Hi, I'm Atsu, the owner of this channel. In this video, we delve into the history of Shibuya, exploring how this town developed into the town of youth. We also analyze the Shibuya Scramble Crossing and discuss the contemporary challenges Shibuya faces along with their solutions. Join us as we uncover the many layers of Shibuya. Understanding Shibuya's history requires knowledge of its unique topography. Formed over centuries by the Shibuya and Udagawa rivers, the area is a very bottom. The varied terrain is evident where the current Shibuya station exists, with many small tributaries contributing to its complex geography. Historical records suggest ancient residents lived on hills, using the advantageous high ground for hunting, fishing, and gathering. The name Shibuya likely originated from Shibuya clan when rulers of current Kanagawa prefecture in the 11th century moved here. They established Shibuya castle and the still existing Konno Hachiman shrine. After the warring period in the 17th century, under the Tokugawa shogunate, most of Shibuya's land was directly controlled by them. Residents of officials serving shogunate were established on the hills of Shibuya, and farming villages dotted the paddy fields in the lowlands. Roads connecting Shibuya to other towns were developed, and the area around Dogenzuka flourished as a post town. At that time, when water transportation was mainstream, the Shibuya River was used as a logistic waterway. Moving to the late 19th century, when samurais were abolished and modernization began, a new facility was built near intersection of the roads and the Shibuya River, a railway station. In 1885, the current-day Yamanote Line was laid in Shibuya, and the Shibuya Station was constructed. As the tram services began from both the west and the east in around 1910s, Shibuya Station was located to its current location in 1920. Subsequently, in 1927, a line under the Tokyo Electric Railway, and in 1933, another private railway began serving Shibuya Station. Thus, Shibuya Station started to grow as a major terminal station in Tokyo. An indispensable part of Shibuya Station's history is the story of Hachiko the Royal Dog. Hachi, an Akita dog born in Akita Prefecture in 1923, was adopted the following year by Professor Ueno of the University of Tokyo. Hachi often saw off and greeted Professor at Shibuya Station, the nearest railway station to his home. In 1925, Professor suddenly passed away at university. Though Hachi was taken in by another household in Tokyo, his deep attachment to his late master remained unchanged. For over nine years, he continued to visit Shibuya Station every day at the time his master would have returned. Hachi's story was published in a newspaper in 1932, and he became widely known as Hachiko the Royal Dog. In 1934, a statue of Hachi was erected at Shibuya Station, which he witnessed. After that, Hachi passed away in 1935. The original Hachi statue was lost during the chaos of war, but a second statue was rebuilt in 1948. This is the Hachi statue that currently stands in front of Shibuya Station. For those interested in more about Hachi's story, watching the video produced by Ami Yamato is highly recommended. Returning to the history of Shibuya, in 1934, Tokyo Electric Railway, influenced by the bustling Shibuya Station, opened its department store on the east side of Shibuya Station, later known as the Tokyo Store East. In 1938, Tokyo merged with a tramway company and opened the Tokyo Store West on the west side of the Shibuya Station. Around this time, the current-day Tokyo Metro Ginza Line was laid at Shibuya Station, with a platform located on the third floor of this Tokyo Store West. One might wonder why an underground train runs on an elevated track, but remember the fact explained at the beginning that Shibuya exists in a valley. A cross-sectional view of the Ginza Line clearly shows the area around Shibuya Station is remarkably sunken. These facts indicate that Shibuya's development was progressing while taking advantage of its unique topography. 
However, Shibuya's development was temporarily halted during this era. The outbreak of the Pacific War in 1941 led to the control of materials. Shibuya Ward suffered the largest scale damage during the airless from May 24 to 25, 1945. The area was extensively bombed by about 250 B-29 bombers, causing widespread fires and indiscriminate attacks on civilians. The Shibuya area saw about 77% of the district burned down and destroyed. Additionally, there were 920 civilian casualties and over 140,000 victims. During this air raid, Shibuya Station and both East and West Tokyo Store were heavily burned down. The destruction caused by the US allies was indeed devastating, but that did not end the history of this unique town. In this part, we'll see how Shibuya evolved into the town of youth in modern Tokyo. After the war, black markets emerged in burned areas near Shibuya Station, supplying scarce goods. These illegal shops were essential for Shibuya residents' daily needs. However, concerns about safety, hygiene, and the disruption of regular distribution led to strict regulations. The US military in Japan, GHQ, and the Tokyo Metropolitan Government organized these street vendors. In 1950, food stores near Shibuya Station were relocated north, forming Nonbei Yokocho, a street still known among tourists for its traditional Japanese ambience. As black markets declined in the 1950s, Tokyo Corporation's real estate business, the Tokyo Group, spearheaded Shibuya's new developments. Firstly, by 1954, the area around the Tokyo store underwent expansion and renovation after its war damage. Next, in 1957, Tokyo Bunka Kaikan, featuring a rare woman's book, I mean, I mean, planetarium, yeah, yeah pr pr planetarium and the Shibuchika, Shibuya Underground Shopping Center, arguably Japan's oldest underground shopping center, were completed. The 1960s saw the discontinuation of the east-west tram services with the new Tokyo lines and the Tokyo Metropolitan Subway's Hanzomo line introduced in the 1970s. Meanwhile, Washington Heights, a post-war U.S. military residential area in Shibuya's west, was returned to Japan and partially used as a Yoyogi Olympic Village for 1964 Tokyo Olympics. Here, Yoyogi Park opened in 1967, and in 1972, NHK, the major Japanese public broadcasting company, established its headquarters. Back to the topic of Tokyo, despite its dominance in Shibuya, the Seibu Group, originating from Seibu Railway, emerged as a rival. In 1968, the Seibu Department Store expanded into Shibuya, beginning Seibu's incursion with a store on a slope connecting Yoyogi Park to Shibuya Station. In 1973, along this slope, Seibu opened the fashion forward Shibuya Parco. Parco, by the way, means park in Italian. This led to the adjacent street being named Shibuya Koendori or Shibuya Park Street. From that time, it is said that Shibuya Parco had a clear business strategy. Recognizing that Japanese people, having experienced rapid economic growth in the 70s, were shifting from material satisfaction to a desire for more cultural lifestyle, Palco aimed to establish its brand not just by selling products, but by promoting culture, especially fashion culture for the youth. With that strategy, Parco transformed the street into a fashion hub. By 1981, Parco had added two more buildings and entertainment venues like Parco Theater, cementing its role in youth culture. Facing Seibu's growing influence in Shibuya's youth market, Tokyo shifted focus to sundry goods, increasingly seen as battle for expressing lifestyle among younger consumers. In 1978, Tokyo opened Tokyo Hands Shibuya store, specializing in lifestyle goods. The following year, they developed a triangular area next to Dogenzaka Street, launching Shibuya 109, making their significant entry into the youth fashion market. Meanwhile, in order to counter Tokyo Hands, Seibu opened Shibuya Seibu Loft in 1987, concentrating on youth-oriented goods. The strategy of loft transcended mere sales. It created an image where simply carrying a loft's yellow bag was considered fashionable. This clearly followed Palco's approach of selling culture, not just products. From the 1990s, Shibuya reinforced its status as a youth-centric area. This decade, dominated by the Garu fashion movement, saw Shibuya became a youth culture hotspot. Garu, a term derived from the 70s English slang, girl, gained prominence in the 90s as Shibuya-style fashion 
mainly captivating high school girls. The mid to late 90s particularly highlighted gather fashion, with Shibuya 109 boasting a plethora of popular items for them, like crop tops and sandals. Despite the waning gather trend, Shibuya today continued to attract young visitors. A 2018 survey showed that 20% of respondents aged between 25 and 59 frequently visited Shibuya in their youth, outpacing Akihabara and Ginza. A similar trend was observed among younger respondents up to 24 years old, with 18% favoring Shibuya. Additionally, a survey targeting women in their 20s highlighted Shibuya's allure, a trend hub, young people, and extensive commercial facilities. These findings affirm Shibuya's enduring role as a trend center and youth culture epicenter. Consequently, through Tokyo and Seibu's strategic targeting of the youth market, Shibuya has evolved into a beloved destination for younger generations. Now, it's time to focus on the Shibuya Scramble Crossing. This place is truly a symbol of both the bustle and business of Tokyo. In this spot, we will take a closer look at its origins and background, as well as the impact this intersection has had. Officially named Shibuya Station Front Crossing, it's located northwest of Shibuya Station. Post-war, the area underwent urban planning after the black market was cleared. As reconstruction advanced, station area congestion worsened, leading to the road widening towards Dogenzaka, a process that took time. The widening process began in 1956, following the demolition of old buildings and house locations. During this period, stores like Sanzenli Pharmaceutical and Taiseido Bookstore emerged, significantly contributing to Shibuya's growth. The founder of Taiseido Bookstore, Hiroshi Funasaka, who battled in Farao and survived severe injuries in the Pacific War, established a store on this spot to elevate Japanese education, a legacy that continues today. I promise that I'll talk more about his story in detail in a future video. In the 1960s, Shibuya saw rise in eateries, highlighting the need for managed urban development for pedestrian safety and smoother traffic flow. This led to the development of Shibuya Center Street, stretching northwest from Shibuya Station's Hachiko and running through an arcade. The 90s of this brought further enhancement like arch construction, streetlight installation, and street tiling, elevating its appeal as a shopping district. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, developments by Tokyo and Seibu groups transformed Center Street into a youth magnet. To manage increasing pedestrian traffic, the crossing was turned into a scramble crossing in 1973. Today, the Shibuya Scramble Crossing, where five roads converge, is a unique five-way intersection. Sanzenli Pharmaceutical, the Tsutaya Video Rental Service, the entrance to Shibuya Center Street, Taiseido Bookstore, and Shibuya 109, located slightly west of the crossing, are defining features of the modern Shibuya Scramble Crossing. A major characteristic of this crossing is immense pedestrian traffic and large-scale outdoor advertising. Known as the world's busiest crossing, it's constantly bustling, with up to 3,000 people crossing at each green signal. Pedestrian count averages 260,000 on weekdays and 390,000 on weekends. Additionally, six large outdoor screens surround the crossing, broadcasting commercials and music videos to waiting pedestrians. The crossing frequently appears in news programs and weather forecasts, making its advertisement highly visible and a leading spot for outdoor advertising in Japan. Now, let's see the impact of Shibuya Scramble Crossing over cities. Just as Times Square is known as the face of New York City and the US, this crossing is widely recognized as a symbol of Tokyo and Japan. Its portrayal in movies and TV dramas has been significant. One of the fine examples is the 2006 film The Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, featured a car chase scene at Shibuya Crossing, making the place known internationally. Although largely created as a composite footage, the scene where Sean Boswell drives into the crowd at the crossing realistically depicts Shibuya, captivating many audiences. Following this, the crossing appeared as a key location in the 2010 movie Resident Evil Afterlife and the 2020 Netflix hit drama Alice in Borderland. Its influence extends beyond media to actual urban planning. In 2009, Oxford Circus in London was remodeled based on Shibuya Scramble Crossing. With a £5 million budget and a six-month construction period, the crossing was completed in December 2009. The number of people crossing here now reaches up to 32,000 per hour. 
Overall, the Shibuya Scramble Crossing continues to attract people worldwide with its unique charm. Its influence on tourism and culture is significant, making the crossing a symbol of Tokyo for people worldwide. I have introduced the broader aspects of Shibuya so far, but of course, it has its darker side as well. To put it simply, these are the issues caused by visitors and weaknesses in urban development. First, there are issues with the behavior of visitors. On occasions like New Year's Eve, the World Cup, and Halloween, people, including foreigners residing in Japan, gather at the Shibuya Scramble Crossing to celebrate. Most of these gatherings are not organized by administrative bodies or commercial organizations, but are spontaneously initiated. Those who gather are not residents, but people visiting Shibuya from other parts of Japan and abroad. During these events, the area around the crossing transforms into an extraordinary space dominated by the revelers. Generally, the crowd at the crossing tends to get overly excited, especially on Halloween when riots have been worsening. Shibuya Ward has allocated about 130 million yen, equal to approximately 1 million US dollars, for measures like posting signs, calling for Halloween bans, and covering the cost of liar to police. For more on this unique social issue in Shibuya, I recommend watching a video I made earlier. Another issue is the weaknesses in urban development, which primarily includes four problems. First, Shibuya Station, which developed during Japan's rapid economic growth period during the 70s, now serves eight lines, making it the second busiest station in the world after Shinjuku Station. However, with each new line, the station has undergone expansions and additions, leading to a complex and intertwined layout. This complexity contributes to confusion in pedestrian flow and vulnerability in disaster preparedness. Second, the facilities around Shibuya Station, dating back to the 1930s, underwent several renovations up to the 1960s. However, most predate the 1981 seismic standards, and their aging infrastructure is a concern. Third, the retail sector's diversification and the rise of online shopping have led to a decline in physical store sales since the 2000s, impacting Shibuya's major retailers like the Tokyo and Seibu groups. This change, especially with younger consumers turning to online shopping, is diminishing Shibuya's identity as a youth-focused area. Lastly, compared to other Tokyo districts, Shibuya has fewer vacant offices. This shortage challenges the needs of venture companies, leading to a migration away from Shibuya, as seen with major IT firms like Amazon and Line relocating due to expansion. These issues, the station's complexity, aging infrastructure, the decline in Shibuya's youth appeal, and a lack of office space have emerged over time, necessitating comprehensive solutions. To solve the issues, a significant redevelopment initiative, deemed a once-in-a-century project, began in Shibuya in the late 2010s. In this spot, we analyze how solutions to the aforementioned challenges are progressing in today's Shibuya. Firstly, addressing the issue of the station complexity, the Tokyo Toyoko Line underground conversion construction that began in 2013 has played a significant role. This project was planned to enable mutual direct operation between the Tokyo Toyoko Line coming from the south and the Tokyo Metro Fukutoshin Line from the north in response to the increasing number of users at Shibuya Station. The most challenging part was the construction in a narrow area near Daikan Yama Station, one stop away from Shibuya Station where setting up a temporary diversionary line during construction was impossible. Consequently, Tokyo Corporation adopted the unique STROM method they developed. This method involved first laying a new underground line directly beneath the existing above-ground Toyoko line, then removing the old line and laboratory lowering a section of the above-ground line into the newly created underground line. This operation had a tight deadline, with only about 3.5 hours from the last train on March 15th to the first train the following morning. After eight years of long preparation, on the night of March 15th, around 1,200 workers were mobilized, and the construction began at 1 a.m. First, the old above-ground sections were removed. Then, using jacks, the designated above-ground sections were carefully moved underground and connected with the new underground line. Finally, after trial runs from both directions, the first train left the now underground Shibuya station at 5.6 a.m. and arrived at Daikanyama station without any issues, marking the successful completion of the direct connection of the two lines. 
This historic construction showcases a high level of civil engineering technology in Japan, both domestically and internationally. And a video documenting the construction on YouTube has been viewed nearly 3 million times. Next, to address the aging infrastructure and a lack of office space, the Tokyo Group has been actively engaged in a redevelopment around Shibuya Station, in conjunction with the underground conversion of the Tokyo Toyoko Line, just as I mentioned. In 2012, after Tokyo Bunka Kaikan and its planetarium were closed, Shibuya Hikaria was completed on the site. This was followed by the construction of Shibuya Scramble Square on the site of the aforementioned Tokyo Store East. Additionally, several mixed-use commercial facilities with office spaces, including Shibuya Stream where Google Japan is now headquartered, were built. These developments have led to an increase in tall buildings in Shibuya and enhanced office functions, particularly for IT companies. From 2012 to 2024, nine massive buildings were constructed around Shibuya Station, with more large-scale buildings planned by 2030. Furthermore, as part of solutions to combat the decline in Shibuya's youth appeal, a redevelopment plan was announced in 2023 for an approximately 8.5 hectare area facing the Scramble Crossing. The plan includes the construction of the state-of-the-art entertainment venues, tourist amenities, and lodging accommodations, with the development of wide alleys to enhance circulation. Building on the 1980s when Tokyo and Seibu established Shibuya's brand known for youth-oriented products, these redevelopment projects are expected to bring new appeal to Shibuya and create a brand that will again attract people. Thus, through a once-in-a-century project, Shibuya is transforming itself into a new era, addressing multiple issues it has. As this redevelopment continues, Shibuya will further solidify its position as a vibrant international business and cultural center. Of course, there are negative opinions regarding the redevelopment of Shibuya. As the redevelopment project continues, there is a risk that the unique charm of the area may be lost, resulting in a boring and calculous cityscape. Additionally, concerns have been raised that small and original shops may be economically pressured and pushed out due to rising rents. This is the same social issue as I mentioned in previous Akihabara's video. On these concerns, Tateki Nishi, the editor-in-chief of the Shibuya Economic Newspaper, has stated as follows, quote, In some areas of Shibuya, high-rise buildings for redevelopment are being constructed by utilizing land that has been operated on by local landowners for many years. Under such a cooperative system, there is a great possibility that the original shops that were in that location can reopen in the newly completed buildings. Thus, there is a potential within the Shibuya redevelopment project to maintain the local charm by allowing the unique local shops to continue operating within the facilities. Now, time to recap the whole video. It is clear that Shibuya, with its complex history, continues to evolve even in modern times. While it retains its appeal as a hub for youth culture, fashion, and entertainment, it also faces numerous challenges, including urban development issues. In response to these challenges, Shibuya is now undergoing a once-in-a-century project. The redevelopments are transforming Shibuya into a more attractive and international hub for business and culture with its continued development eagerly anticipated.